Hey everybody, this is Chris with Invest LIH, and I shot a video a couple days ago just discussing the population and the birth rate, and I thought that I would kind of formalize that for some of the people who watched it because I get a lot of comments on it, which is great. I mean, it was a great video, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are watching it, but I wanted to just kind of formalize it, give you some context of what we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And we're going to talk briefly. This will be a short video, but it's going to we're going to go into some of the things that people are talking about. One thing is is in the um, real estate market, they're saying that demand will shift because population is going backwards, which means our equilibrium price will drop due to a new equilibrium based on reduced demand. So the first thing that I would suggest here is why only real estate? If demand is going to drop because population is going to drop, doesn't that happen for every market? I mean, any business is reliant on the demand forecast that they project. So I think that's where my small business exposure over the last two decades comes into play. Before I opened my cookie shop, I took a look at significant demographic levels and income levels, which brings me to my next point, which is income. Now, when people are saying that demand is going to drop because population is going to decline, some people are saying that the population worldwide is declining. So other people are saying that population in some areas is going up and, and in the U.S. in general, it's going down because of these, um, these birth rate challenges. One thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop sharing here and I'm going to share another screen because we want to talk about um, two different things. What with respect to income. So the first one is I'm just going to look at the, this is a Pew Research, you can see the URL up top here. And this is the population income. Uh, this is the 2011 share. I couldn't really find another uh, Pew uh, study, but based on these numbers, I would suggest that they're, the trends are relatively the same. So let's take a quick look here. The poor countries in the world are here. The lower income, you can see it spreads a little bit. Middle income, we can see that the U.S. is starting to come up, and it shows right here. In 2011, the share of middle income was 7%. Upper, upper middle income, the share was 31%. High income, the share is 55%. And this is worldwide income, not U.S. income. So the other thing to consider here is in general, the income in the U.S. is relatively high compared to the rest of the world, which means if we were to go back to the um, whiteboard, okay, which means that as, whoa, there we go, as the population decreases, in the world, that income share will migrate. And we can, we kind of see that in the US and we see that in the West in general. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna be a low income country, whereas a high income country will probably see this a shift of demand outward. So keep that in mind as we look at this. I'm gonna stop sharing again because we're gonna go back and we're gonna see if the um, population trend is, if the migration trend is, is true. So here we can see that, and this, this is from UN Immigration, it's a world report, um, and it shows that um, 50 million people in the U.S. are immigrants. 
Um, does it have the dates as of June, January 2020? Uh, 2020 report, November 19, November 2019. So as of November 19, we have 50 million immigrants in the U.S. A percentage of the population of the U.S. that is an immigrant is 15.3% according to this study. So when we come back up and take a look at some of their other things, one thing I would say is when we look at the percentages, so 84% of America is non-immigrants. Now this, they could, they could have immigrated, like their parents could have immigrated here, and now they were born here. Um, but then we look at some of these other things, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, well, why would why would immigrants just choose America? Why wouldn't they choose another place? Well, they're not choosing China. They're not choosing Brazil. Okay. And then there's some African countries that they're not choosing as well. India, they're not choosing. People are choosing to move to the U.S. So I'm going to stop sharing this. We're going to jump back. And hold on a second here. There we go. So why are they choosing the U.S.? Because of this situation here. So if I were to put high income nation and low income nation here, we can see that, yes, demand and population are decreasing in low income places. We can also see that demand and population are increasing in high income places. There's a great podcast out there called Economics Explained that discusses uh, nation by nation thoughts about these two dynamics. And so, so like these people are watching online and they're like, who is this guy? What's he talking about? He's just a real estate guy. No, I'm an economist. I study a lot of these different aspects. And when we talk about economy, we talk about, <coughs> excuse me, I'm an economist. We talk about the models that are used to provide an outcome. And so when we look at a model like um, demand, we look at immigration plus birth rate plus one other thing, institutional stability. So when we look at a place like Pakistan, for example, where they don't necessarily have this, and it's not due to anything anything in particular, what, what it's mainly due from is that they have uh, very few, um, they have very few wealthy individuals who invest in the country. When the U.S. or even like um, places in Europe, ha they can get loans from banks, whereas in general, Pakistan will have a hard time to get those loans because they have such a volatile market. That plays a role into the demand for goods and services especially goods and services that that are, are only within within the borders of the country what does that look like homes businesses okay make a little roof there People are investing in things in the U.S. And why are they doing that? Because income levels are higher. People want to move here because they want to receive higher incomes. So just a quick video. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here. And just kind of say, I appreciate everybody watching, but this is just a little bit of a deeper dive into this because a lot of people were kind of asking some questions. I, some people, I don't think they watched the full video, but... Um, when we look at things through an economic lens, we have to look at multiple different factors like income, uh, like the income that they want to receive, the migration patterns. We also have to look at um, stability and birth rates. So yes, birth rates are one factor, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be filled by something else. And one last thing, there is a lot of people who are discussing like, uh, because I did mention the... Um, the declining marriage rate in the U.S. 
Um, and they're like, oh, so what does that have to do with the demand for homes? You got to live somewhere. So it's either going to drive rents up or it's going to drive home prices up. And if you're an investor, you love it that it's driving rents up. And if it's uh, and if you're a flipper or something like that, you can buy a home, rehab it and sell it to somebody really at a good price and then make a profit margin on that. I just I, I think that a lot of times people are trying to make this crash occur. And in order for the market to crash, it, we need to have a significant drop in supply or increase in supply. And I don't see that happening. Where is the supply coming from? People have ridiculously low rates compared to what is offered today. Why are they going to trade a 4% rate for a 8 or 7% rate at prevailing prices? They would rather just pay the extra taxes. An $1,800 payment in 2019 is probably what now? $2,200? Or you can go out on the free market and buy a house down the road for $3,500. I mean, there's you can you can just search TikTok and see plenty of people who do those videos. And I just think that when people are asking about the housing market, I think it's a lot of wishful thinking when they discuss like, oh, well, the population is going to decline, which means there's going to be no demand. And one final thing about demand. And if you're watching this video to the end, comment, because I don't know if many people have said this. As demand drops. In general, prices will drop as well because the supplier needs to sell. We are going to see price drops, and I might do a separate video on this. As demand drops, prices will fall, but not the prices of homes. The prices to acquire the capital to buy the homes, they will fall, meaning mortgage lenders will compress their profit margins even more to compete. Why? To close the sale. Not necessarily lowering a home price, but lowering the mortgage aspect of the, of the closing. Declining their profit margins in order to get the sale through. They have bills to pay too. So if you like this video, please let me know. Thanks for all the new subscribers and the commenters. I do appreciate it. I don't mind having conversations. I do think sometimes people come into this and they just want to kind of put forth an agenda and that's okay. I will try my best to talk through it with you, but at some point I will say, you know what? At this point, I think we're just going to part our separate ways. So thanks so much guys.